What is up? Welcome, my friends, to another episode of The Big Dad Show. Hey, we did this last week. We're going to do it again t- today. See how we like it. I got a new format. Uh, not a really a new format, but I got a lot more information, so we won't be bogged down by the the jump over for the two hours. Uh, what are we going to do right now? The first thing we're going to do is take a second and say, we appreciate you watching today. We appreciate if you are in the house with us checking us out uh we're gonna give a quick shout out to our buddy anjamo he is not watching us yet but he better be in the thing we're gonna uh say this we're gonna try to do this radio show at least once a week uh i'm not sure how we can do it some and get it really rocking but we're gonna try our best um Okay, so here we go, rock and roll. Once again, we got Monster Cat going on in the background. We love that sh- uh, channel. Uh, in case you don't know, that is um, my brain just shut off. So that is um, music that you can use in your ch- in your channels. Uh, if you're a streamer, you can listen to Monster Cat, and uh, it's all royalty free. It won't they won't. Um, they won't mute your VODs, and and then when you pop it over to YouTube, of course it is royalty free, so it doesn't. Um, there's no copyright over on YouTube. So what's up, y'all? We this is the Big Dad Show. Hey, we got a few things we're gonna talk about here. Um, the first things first. It's the news that matters, or does it? Uh, hour one um, episode. So the biggest thing that I saw this week, um, besides the handful of celebrities that passed away is that we um in the gaming world had a bit of a of a kerfuffle billy mitchell uh got his scores deleted and uh from twin galaxies and was um banned for life now in, in case you don't know who billy mitchell is a uh, quick um a quick rundown on what billy mitchell is billy mitchell is like the super villain of gaming high scores um he um, (laughs) well i guess the best way to put it is he's fire blaster from pixels i mean if you haven't seen the movie pixels uh sorry Uh, but anyway he he's a super villain of of the gaming world like he has all these high scores he's been accused of cheating so many times over the course of his career and um you know that may or may not be true. Uh, he says he he swears he hasn't been cheating all these years. Um, so anyway, but back in the back in the two thousands, there was a um, uh, man a documentary uh, called The King of Kong, and in there it documented um, you know a couple of players who were trying to beat the you know to set the high score uh, on Donkey Kong. Uh, Billy Mitchell seem to like appear at the last minute all the time and you know have videotapes or some kind of thing that invalidated the you know the claims of uh, uh, of the other player and so um, early this year one of the staff members that that's his kind of his job is to make sure that you know we're not cheating uh, when you when you submit those uh, high scores um, he noticed some transitions in uh, Billy Mitchell's videos that um, didn't seem right to him. So he put them, uh, you know, he, um, you know, put them to the test. And what they came up with is that they believe that Billy Mitchell used an emulator to achieve his high scores. Um, now they have certain strict rules, and um, I, I read a, a really great article about it this week that wanted to know who you know who made the who made the rules and why uh, do we even care? Um, but Twin Galaxies is the oldest uh, high score collection database, and um, you know so that's pr- pretty much why we care. And we pretty much you know just like the NFL has the Hall of Fame and they collect the scores, uh, tw- uh, Twin Galaxies collects the scores for for gamers. Uh, and so they invalidated his claims. Uh, um, deleted his scores and banned him from Twin Galaxies for life. Uh, now, I'm not sure that Billy cares. I mean, I think really Billy Mitchell uh, hasn't really changed much since the 90s. Um, and so I don't really 
think he cares about that very much. I mean, he did say he's got proof that he didn't cheat. Uh, we'll see in the coming days. Uh, so anyway, so that's my first news story. What do you guys think about that? I mean, uh, like I guess the questions we have to ask ourselves are, do we care what Twin Galaxies thinks about, you know, us stream our high scores? Um, you know, on arcades or whatever else, do we care about what they think? And if we don't care what they think, then why are we paying so much attention? And why does Billy Mitchell, you know, why how how does this affect gaming? Um, you know, and the other thing is, does it matter? Um, would it matter if if he had used an emulator? Now, if he had said that he had used an emulator, they wouldn't have invalidated his scores. Um, there is a category in those Donkey Kong scores that uh, allows for emulators, emulation, and um, so if he hadn't said that he had used, uh, you know, the cabinet and, and said it was emulated, then it wouldn't have mattered, but basically because he said that it, was emu it wasn't emulated, that it was the cabinet, that's really why they, uh, you know, they, they claimed he was cheating. So anyway, so tweet at me. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, uh, you know, at you know, at Gunny G nineteen seventy six. Uh, let me know. Do you think that it matters that, um, you know, that Billy Mitchell will use an emulator? Does it? Does it? Do you care? I mean, do we care at all about this story? Uh, I, I only, I only um, bring it up because, uh, as a as a streamer, as a gamer, uh, it actually doesn't bother me if you use cheat codes or whatever um, like I explained to to my wife who she thinks cheat codes are cheating and you shouldn't use them at all if you're playing a difficult PVE game um, and you can't get past a section and you need to get you need to use cheat codes to get past there because it's incredibly difficult and you know I, I don't see a problem using the cheat codes I don't see a problem using cheat codes um, you know, if for yourself, uh, it does ruin the experience in some games, um, and you know, but that's on you. That's on you if you want to do it. I, I have used cheat codes. I used the cheat codes in the stream the other night because I was playing a very difficult game and I could not uh, get past the first level. So I did turn on the uh, the Game Shark and let it uh, make me invulnerable for uh, a level. So anyway, let me know. Let me know in the chat. Let me know in, on Twitter if you think that. Um, what do you think? Should we should should uh, cheat codes? Are cheat codes cheating to the point where we don't want, we we shouldn't use them anymore, or uh, is it cool? Anyway, so we're gonna go on to our next um, news that matters or does it, um, and that is and this is this is I chose it this week uh, because it's really kind of relevant to what we do as streamers. Um, Day, there's a, a study that actually says that the longer you sit, your memory might actually shrink. Um, the study is kind of nebulous, but it does suggest that uh, activity, uh, that extended sitting uh, is bad for uh, your memory and that you can actually start to lose your short-term memory if you, if you sit for extended periods of time. Um, you know, and, and um, as a streamer, uh, and this is this is my, I mean, this is my chosen profession. I want to stream. I want to do YouTube. Uh, I play video games constantly, even when I'm not streaming video games. I play video games. Um, you know, I do have an, a real life job where I get I get up, I get my move around, uh, but that's not what I want to do forever. Uh, what I want to do forever is sit in this room right here, talk to you guys, play video games. Um, you know, and, and that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, there's other things I want to do. I'm a musician and an artist, obviously, from behind me. But, um, you know, those are the things I want to do. And it's it's kind of scary to think about the fact that maybe our memory actually shrinks um, the longer we sit. Well, you know, um, so anyway, uh, was, so again, tell me what you think. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in chat uh, what you think. Uh, it, you know, does it? Does it scare you to think that the longer we sit, the, the more our memories might shrink? Uh, let me get a drink of coffee, y'all. Oh, let me show you this. This is my mother-in-law's gift to me a couple of, ooh, it's dirty. Uh, I don't need Google. My husband knows everything. That's uh, for my wife uh, because my mother-in-law calls me, calls me the human Google. But up, but um, but um, but um, here we go. What is our, uh, 
see what's cooking on Monster Cat. You can barely hear it. I need to turn it up just a smidge. It, 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 it. Yeah, there we go. Got some, got some uh, Grant Bowtie. That's a cool name. Bump, a bump, a bump. Yeah. All right. So, uh, back to the whole memory may actually actually shrink thing. They did say in the article that, um, you know, that these results vary. So it's not, you know, it's not something that we should be completely terrified of. Uh, but you know, it, it may physical activity is definitely good for us. So, uh, what I propose is, for those of us who stream constantly, and those of us who this is our, our chosen profession, um, what if we streamed from a treadmill? Uh, you know, you get on the treadmill. Of course, about five seconds into it, I'm going <laughs> to sound like this. <sighs> so that's a bad idea for me. All right. So, third on the news that matters, and this uh, actually does matter to me. I have a uh, a touch of a mental condition called uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Now, before you look at the nonsense going on in the background and say, "Oh, I don't think so," well, you don't have the obsessive compulsive. There's too much junk in the background for you to be obsessive compulsive. Um. That's where you don't understand the disease. Uh, so I do have germophobia to a certain degree. Um, I do have um, obsessive compulsive. If you follow me around at work and you see how I straighten things. Uh, the problem is is that I live with five other people. And uh, four of them, uh, well, three of them are less than five, five feet tall. And they're basically, well, they're basically little Oompa Loompa. And they, they just constantly destroy my office. So it didn't look like this uh, a week ago. I had it all cleaned up after the stream, getting ready to do this. Well, but then um, here we go. So anyway, so um, a study that was recently done, and I can't remember. I'll have to get the details. But a study was recently done by a university on bathroom hand dryers. Now, anybody who ever has ever watched The Big Bang Theory knows that Sheldon Cooper, who has uh, more than a touch of uh, OCD, hates bathroom hand dryers, and he says that they're disgusting. Well, according to this research team, they are indeed disgusting. Apparently, when you use the bathroom, now, and I knew this already, uh, when you use the bathroom and you, you, you get done and you, you push the handle to flush the toilet, unless the lid's down on your home toilet, uh, it shoots water and germs five, six hundred feet, um, and it's pretty. It's pretty. It's actually really disgusting. And um, so what they said in this article is that because there's no lid in the public restrooms, the uh, germ particles go up in the air, and they get inside your the hand dryer, and they get stuck in the hand dryer. And they, uh, ooh, I'm clicking the wrong thing. Hold on. Uh, so they get stuck in the hand dryer, and then they breed in there because it's hot and it's already sticky. And then you go along and you got your wet hands, which are freshly cleaned with uh, uh, germ germ soap, you know, anti antibacterial soap. So your hands don't even have the good bacteria on them that we build up. And so then you push that button, and then that hot air comes out. And it just propels those germs at maximum speed onto your hands, and they get stuck on there. And the next thing you know, you're sick. <laughs> um, and that, to me, is the most terrifying thing. Now, they say that um, if they install the HEPA filter in the intakes and in the outputs, that would um, go a long way to stop that, you know, that disease being spread. Um... But uh, so far, I mean, that's a that's a huge deal. As a former restaurant manager, uh, you, you know, it's a it's a huge deal. Uh, it's a very expensive to put in HEPA filters, um, and, and they're not. And and the thing about a HEPA filter is, is that you have to replace it. You, it's not forever. 
And so, excuse me. So what I want to know is, is it is it better in the long run to just get rid of the air dryer and just put the paper towel holders back because you can empty the paper towels every day. You can empty the clean paper towels. And if and if we were started recycling those bad boys, it would probably be a better deal in the long run to just, you know, to just get rid of the air thing and just put the paper towels back. Um so anyway, so let me know what you think. Uh, let me know in the chat room if you're paying attention uh, and it, you think, you know, would it be better to get rid of those stupid things and just go back to paper towels? Um, you know, there's a cost associated with all that stuff. So anyway, that's uh, – so that's that. Uh, you know, and one thing uh, – back to that for just a second. One thing that, uh, you know, we could do – is is just you know put big things of s hand sanitizer everywhere like like everywhere like like everywhere and then you know oh, kill them little suckers um, all right so uh, about the fourth thing on my list is uh, today and this is serious this is this is news that matters. Um, we have a bunch of celebrities have that have passed away um, in the uh, in the last few days. Um, now, originally when I wrote the notes for the show, I put down just Arlie Ermy uh, Gunny um, from um, uh, well, almost everybody knows who Gunny is. Uh, he's been in a ton of things. One of the most recognizable voices in uh, in Hollywood. Um, you know, if you don't know who Gunny is, just just Google Gunny. Just Google the Gunny, and you'll know he was uh, a Full Metal Jacket was was one of the first things that he did, and uh, it really set the tone for the rest of his career. Uh, that uh, gunnery sergeant that he played for the Marine Corps uh, and a drill instructor. Um, as a matter of fact, I loved Full Metal Jacket so much um, that part of the reason why I chose Gunny. Uh, as my screen name um, is because when I All right, sorry about that. Quick tech technical break. Uh, so anyway, so part of the reason why I chose Gunny was because I, I started playing uh, online FPS, and um, and so uh, we had to choose a name, and I chose Gunny uh, because because I was playing as a Marine, and you know uh, Arlie Ermy is one of my heroes, so that's why I chose Gunny. Uh, so Gunny G uh, is kind of a tribute to to Arlie Ermy. And like I said, he did pass away this week at 74. He's going to be missed. He's pretty much a badass. Whew, I had to run up the steps, and I'm a little out of breath. Anyway, he's pretty much a badass, and uh, he is going to be missed by everybody. Uh, so bottoms up, Gunny. Uh, I hope you're up there in heaven uh, teaching the angels how to march in formation. Uh, ooh, out of breath. Thanks for coming in the stream. Welcome. For those who just came in, uh, we are doing the whole Big Dad, uh, Big Dad show right now. We're just talking about some news that matters. Um, uh, one, another person, another celebrity that passed away this week. Um, one of my personal heroes as well. Uh, and you're probably, if you know me at all, if you're any of my friends and family watching, you, you're going to know that uh, this is pretty shocking. Is Barbara Bush? Uh, she passed away yesterday. Former first lady and the mother of uh, pres American president as well. Uh, you know, 
you don't have to be a conservative to admire somebody. Uh, I'm pretty liberal. Um, you know, um, that being said, the one of the things that that everybody has said, and I, you know, having grown up and voted for President Bush the first time, one of the things that I did love about the lady is that she loved this country, she loved her family, and uh, she's going to be missed. And her grandkids, I feel especially sorry for her grandchildren. Um, sucks to lose your grandmother. I lost my grandmother a few years ago, and that's still a hole that is in my heart all the time. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's our that's our news that matters. It's about we're about half an hour in to our show. We did take a quick break so I could run upstairs and try to answer the phone real fast. Um, if it, uh, any of the topics we talked about so far, just tweet at me at Gunny G, uh, nineteen seventy six. Uh, let me know what you think uh, about any of the topics that we've talked about thus far. All right, so we are going to move on now. Uh, let's see, tech news. We've got a few things to talk about in the tech news department. Um, my, hold on a second, my browser's acting crazy. All right, so tech news. In tech news this week, uh, Mark Zuckerberg appears before Congress because he screwed up. Yet again. All right. Um, you know, the, last week my my big big dad pet peeve of the week was um, was the whole thing with uh, Facebook and their uh, apparent lack of respect for our private information. Um, you know, so we don't need to go over that again. Um, but it 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 is interesting to me that. Th- when Zuckerberg sits down with Congress, you, you know they're outraged. They're outraged, uh, you know, at the at the things that happened and all that jazz. But they ask him the dumbest questions. Like they want to know, <laughs> they want to know about Facebook as an as a, a you know an internet service provider. As far as I know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but. Facebook doesn't provide any internet. I mean, they're an app on the internet. They're a service on the internet. But as far as I know, in, unless unless I'm wrong, they don't provide any internet access to anybody. Um, they talked about comparing Facebook to to Instagram. What the heck? Come on, guys. I now I realize. I realize the majority of Congress is old as crap. But come on, get to know your tech some. I mean. It's just it's just embarrassing. I mean, even the president knows more about tech than some of these some of these uh, congressmen. I mean, not that much more, but some more. Um, and the funniest part is is like I have like I said I have conservative friends and family, and you know they made fun of Zuckerberg and all that stuff. Like he was a little kid taken to the table and you know like i saw him when some somebody was actually really funny somebody had put zuckerberg in a high chair you know like he was a little kid brought to brought to answer at the at the big people's table um but the video that i saw you he was really restrained uh he was trying his best to be polite and answer questions that were inherently stupid um you know, on both sides of the fence, so the, the conservatives and liberals both were asking the dumbest questions I've ever heard in my whole life. Uh, just Google dumb questions asked uh, by Congress to Zuckerberg, and you'll 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 see what I'm saying, man. They were just oh, they were mind blowingly, bogglingly stupid. Now here's the deal: one of the people that the only person that I looked on their Facebook uh, for comments and he deserves to have any ire at all at Facebook is my brother. He did get banned for a couple of days, which was funny. I don't know what he did. He doesn't know what he did. Or he does, but I can't remember what it is. Anyway, he got a 48-hour 48 48-hour 48 uh, temporary ban and that was fine. So he wants to be a little salty towards Facebook. I mean, I can understand that, but 
uh, all these other people who use, especially people who use Facebook uh, as a platform to make tons of money, like uh, Tommy Lahren and all those people, should shut up. You use Facebook. You use Facebook as a platform to make your money. So shut up. All right. So other tech news. Um, there is a rumor going around that Apple is going to shut down iTunes in 2019. I don't. Um, I don't know that's true. I, it's just a, a rumor going around the internet that uh, Apple is going to discontinue its iTunes service and replace it with something else. Um, you know, I, I haven't used Apple in forever. Uh, the last time I, I had an iPhone, it was an iPhone 5, um, and I didn't like it that much. No, it was iPhone 4, and I didn't like it that much. I mean, I, I just, like, I, I, I'm a Samsung person. Even, even, even after they tried to blow us all up, I'm a Samsung person, personally. Um, I don't, I don't like how that... Uh, once they decide they're moving to iPhone, you know, 27, then iPhone 10s don't work anymore. So it, it's kind of annoying to me. Um, so I don't really care that they're shutting down iTunes. Um, from a from a tech standpoint, uh, I don't use I don't use that. Um, but I wonder I wonder what it'll what the replacement will be like. Would it will it be another iTunes thing, uh, something like iTunes, something more evolved than iTunes? Will it be more like the Microsoft Store, uh, which is actually just kind of a simplified iTunes? Uh, will it be more like um, Google Play? Uh, you know what is it going to be like? So I mean that's the only reason I mention it is just because it seems to me like that. Uh, all these tech companies, especially you know the more established ones, are just basically chasing chasing each other's tails in a big circle, in a big circle, running around after each other, sniffing each other's butts. And there's really not any kind of um, any any kind of uh, innovation when it comes to this kind of stuff. So I'm just hoping I'm hoping maybe that Apple uh, you know brings back you know the innovation and, and does something cool and new. Uh, and I also wonder how it's going to, you know, how the platform is going to work, uh, the new platform is going to work as far as musicians go, because I know a, a ton of uh, musicians that are not mainstream musicians, they they operate uh, independently, and, and, you know, they make a, not a whole lot of money, but a decent a decent amount of money from iTunes, uh, just selling their, uh, you know, just, just, just distributing their music uh, that way. Uh, of course, I don't think that you can sign up you know, I'm a musician, and I do have some music out there. Uh, like, you can check out a, pl flat, a bleh, platform called Drupal. Uh, I'm on there. Um, uh, sorry, brain shot off mid-sentence. Uh, so I'm on I'm on Drupal, but it doesn't distribute to iTunes, so I'm not exactly sure. I think you might have to, like, sign up with, like, CD Baby or another distribution company and, they, and pay them to distribute uh, to, to iTunes. I don't think that you can just sign up. And distribute to iTunes, but but I, again, I don't know how that works. Uh, so if you do have some information about how that works, um, you know, go ahead and uh, you know tweet at us. We are listening. Uh, let us know uh, on Facebook. Uh, you know how that works. But um, but um, let's see. Check some social media here. What do we got going? Uh, nope, nothing important. Back to what we're talking about. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. all right, so this one's going to be a big one, and it's going to take me a second uh, to explain it and um, and talk about it and give my opinion. Um, the Electronic Arts CEO has said that they have learned their lesson when it comes to microtransactions, and they can't afford to have another battlefront. And the gaming community as a whole says, whatever, dude, um, microtransactions. So what microtransactions are, if you don't know, is uh, microtransactions are when you're playing a game, uh, especially anything. I mean, it could be a free-to-play game. It could also be uh, Battlefront, which you had to pay 50 bucks to download. Um, and you only either only get so much content for... And you have to, uh, 
in in the in some cases pay for extra content or subscribe for extra content uh, and then microtransactions are when you would like uh, a new blaster and you have to pay real money to buy a new blaster or a new character or uh any kind of thing you you know and i i never played battlefront 2 uh, i want to i'm going to i have the classic 2005 version of battlefront 2 uh the new version just released last year or the year before whatever it was i haven't tried it yet everybody keeps saying oh you need to try it um and i'm going to just right not right now anyway um so basically what they say what they're saying is is that they made a mistake and now they'd like to fix it. Uh but n not with Battlefront. Well, well, we'll get to that. But not so much with Battle Battlefront. But they're going to put out Battlefield, a new Battlefield game and several other games. And so they don't want to do the same thing and piss off the fans for their new games. Now they did fix they did fix the microtransactions sort of um, now you can only buy crystals with real money in-game coins uh, are still earned uh, through missions and that kind of thing uh, the Christ and with crystals you can only buy skins you can't buy characters or anything like that those are earned um, I guess with coins or whatever and so um, you know they have kind of fixed the system sort of um, like I said, I don't play it. I haven't played it, so I don't know if it actually is going to make a difference in the long run, uh, or if it's going to affect the gameplay at all. So I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. Um, of course, I won't have a chance to try it on the old system. Excuse me. Um, I have so you know when I by the time I get the game, it'll be the new the new system, and so I won't have a comparison. What I will say, what I will say is that I play another game that EA uh, puts out in the Star Wars universe. Uh, it's called, uh, you know, the the um, Star Wars, the Old Republic, Swator. And microtransactions on that game are how you live. Man, uh, if you want new stuff, you have to buy it. Uh, I mean, you do get some good stuff every now and then, and being a subscriber is freaking great. I love being a subscriber to that game. It's much, much better than trying to play it free-to-play. Uh, you know, I've done both. I did the free to play, uh, and, and then I subscribed, and then I went back to free to play because money. And then, uh, you know, so and, and I have purchased a lot of a lot of what they, what they call in that cartel coins to purchase things. Um, you know, so so if if Battlefront worked at, at all, like uh, the microtransactions in um, the Old Republic. I think that uh, they they need to learn they need to fix some things because, like I said, there, you get your rear end kicked uh, in uh, the old republic unless you get some new gear and and sometimes um, sometimes you just have to spend money. Uh, so, uh, but we'll see we'll see what happens. I mean, um, you know, I never bought anything with battle. Field. I have Battlefield One, Battlefield Two. I never, I never bought anything. I just played it the way it came. Um, of course, I'm not super great at that game, so getting my butt kicked all the time is just kind of the way it works. All right, so we're going to right now take a quick break. Um, give, give me one second to to uh, check some things and then we will be right back again tweet us tweet us if you have an idea for something we should talk about tweet us your opinion about anything we're talking about today uh tweet us uh at gunny g 1976 and uh, let us know you're watching uh we'll give you a shout out later in the pro
All right, we are back, and uh, so we have moved on to my favorite part of uh, the program, and that is Big Dad's Pet Peeve of the Week, and this week, we have two. Now, last week, uh, we our, our pet peeve was, uh, as we mentioned already, Facebook, but this week, I have two. Now, I'm going to start out with uh, the one I decided on on my way to take my wife to work today, and that is Drivers. Now, I live in St. Louis, which is a moderately large city, not nearly as large as Chicago or apparently Detroit or uh, any of those places. But we are pretty large. we got a few million people that live here. And we have a thing on the highways called speed limits. Now, I understand that speed limits, in the grand scheme of things, probably aren't high on your list of things to obey we have so many other rules and and i and i you know i'm sorry that i feel this way and it probably shows my age and i'm cranky old man uh but speed limits are there for a reason and 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 so if you don't follow the speed limit you're breaking the law i mean plain and simple you're You're breaking the law, my friends. So when you go cruising past me, where you're supposed to be doing a 40, 45, something like that, the speed limit's 45, and you go cruising past me at 90, and you have a Back the Blue sticker on the back of your jacked-up redneck pickup truck, let me just go so far as to say you're not backing the blue, brother. I mean, that's just that's just not what you're doing. You're not backing the blue. So that's pick So 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 let's take a second and think about that. You you want to to say that cops are important and you want us to 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 always listen to them. But then you're going to drive super fast on the highway and run over people in your monster truck and then you're gonna honk at me and I'm doing the speed limit and you're gonna flip me off and drive around me super fast well then my friend you deserve the ticket that you got this morning have a nice day so that's part one of Big Dad's Pet Peeve of the Week now Part two, I'm going to be contentious, just for a moment, and I know you're shocked, but Big Dad's Pet Peeve of the Week, part two, is entitled simply, Bill and Ted's Three, Really? Now, I am a Bill and Ted's fan. I'm a child of the 80s. I was born in the late 70s, and I grew up in the 80s, and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and Bogus Journey were to me very funny. I loved them. The idea that you could have a rock and roll band that would change the future is amazing, and going through time is amazing, and it was fun. But a Bill and Ted's 3, really? Do we need that? Does Keanu Reeves really need that? I, I, I mean, has, has he... Uh, of course, Alex Winter might need it. I mean, I haven't seen anything from Alex Winter in a really long time, but Keanu... My friend, really? Seriously? Uh, I don't know, my friend. Just don't know. I think maybe you might want to back off a little bit and just let it go. Uh, All right. So we are moving along here. That was Big Dad's Pet Peeve of the Week, Part 1 and Part 2. All right. Let's see, where are we at as far as time goes? We're about 15 minutes to the uh, to 1 o'clock Central Standard Time. So we are going to do, let's see, let's see, what do we have here? Movie news, movie news, movie news, movie news, movie news, movie news. Um, but before we do that, Standard, I keep saying it, uh, if uh, you know, let me know in the in, down in the com. Let me know in the chat. Let me know on uh, on Twitter, Facebook, 
what you think about my opinions <laughs> about uh, Bill and Ted's Part 3. Do we need it? Do you, you think it'll be funny? I don't think it'll be funny. I, I honestly don't. I don't think it'll be I don't think it'll be funny. I don't think it'll be worth it. Um, plain and simple. I, I think that story has passed. Uh, maybe we might be able to reboot it with new deadheads uh, and stoners in the thing, but I don't think so. Um, and I don't honestly, honestly, I don't think that Keanu Reeves will do a good job playing Ted anymore. I think, you know, he's moved on beyond it. So anyway, but that's my opinion. Uh, if you don't like it or uh, whatever, you can tweet at me at, uh, like I said, Gun Gunny G nineteen seventy six uh, at Twitter. Uh, that's my handle on Facebook. Let me know what you think. And uh, so let's we're gonna take a break. We're gonna take a quick second before we get into movie news and check our social media. Uh, oh look, my sister is tweeting uh, at me something about a job. Thanks, appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. Twitter. What's go? What's cooking on Twitter today? Uh, owls. Uh, see. Ha! That's funny. But 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 um. All right. So let's get back to what we're doing. We're gonna talk about movie news. So we got a couple of movie news. A couple of really super great uh stories to talk about this week. Um. The first one, Deadpool 2, coming to theaters soon. I'm excited. It looks fun. Uh, the, the idea that Deadpool started X-Force is a little weird to me, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Joss Brolin as Cable. It looks hilarious. Uh, he is a little less buff than what I would expect Cable, Cable to look like, but he is mean and gruff, so we'll see. I think it's going to be great. Um... Ryan Reynolds is hilarious. I love that guy. He is Deadpool. I mean, come on. Uh, I love I love Deadpool. I love the first movie. So hilarious. Best uh, superhero movie. Uh, uh, you know, and we'll, Deadpool two is going to be uh, super fun. Speaking of uh, speaking of um, superhero movies, uh, also coming out in uh, this this year is The Incredibles 2. Now, we've waited a long time for The Incredibles 2. <laughs> Incredibles 1 was fun. My kids loved it. I loved it. Uh, uh, I know a lot of adults that really love that movie. There's a lot of hu adult humor in the movie, a lot of um, hidden gems, a lot of uh, things that were put in there so that the rest of us, and not just the little kids, would love that movie, and we did, and I'm excited to see the second movie. The other thing, the things that are the the most fun in this movie coming up is now the roles are reversed um you know first time around bob leaves helen and she and he goes and does secret missions without her uh of course she doesn't know in this one the roles are reversed apparently and elastigirl is out saving the world and uh Increda, and mr incredible has to stay at home and watch the kids and do all that stuff there's a couple of really great scenes in the trailer that uh if you have kids at all you'll understand one is the new math uh dash is trying to do math with his dad and and uh he's doing it the, you know the dad is uh, mr credible is doing it the old way and he's like we and dash says we there we're supposed to do it this way i don't know that way and uh that's a really great reference to um to some popular culture stuff um and then the the scenes uh, where uh, that you see in the trailer with uh, Jack Jack and his powers, it's gonna be it's gonna be this movie's gonna be incredible. It's gonna be it's gonna be action packed from you know the whole the whole thing. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. I'll probably take my kids to see it at the theater if I can uh, raise the money. Another superhero movie I'm looking forward to seeing is called uh, It's Batman Gotham by Gaslight. Um, if you haven't seen the trailer for that one, you need to, you need to check it out. It's this is going to be a film that you're going to have to take a moment and watch. It's not going to be something that you can just easily go over and uh, you know. It, it's it's going to take a minute. Batman essentially is uh, it's the turn of the century, um, and the Ripper, 
has left London and come to Gotham. And now Batman um, is trying to um, to stop the Ripper from murdering in Gotham. Uh, it, it, it's one of those things where, you know, if you're a hardcore fan, you've asked for this forever. Uh, Batman against the Ripper, Batman against whatever. Um, you know, so it's interesting. I'm, I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see what what Batman by uh, Gotham by Gaslight will be. Um, the the animation looks amazing, absolutely incredible. <clears throat> um, I wish I had a clip that we could play on air, but since we don't, uh, since we're not officially a talk show, we, you know, I, I don't want to get in trouble for that or uh, you know copyright or whatever. <clears throat> so. So check that out. The other uh, other big Batman movie news um, is that um, if you haven't checked it out, you need to check out the uh, trailer for Batman. Um, what did I put it? Uh, Batman Ninja. Uh, that's an interesting idea. Um, Batman and the Joker and all of the characters are somehow magically transported to feudal Japan. Uh, Joker gets there before Batman wakes up and has taken over as Shogun. And now Batman, Ninja Batman, has to uh, remove him from power somehow. It looks interesting. The the uh, the animation style is very anime, uh, very manga, and uh, so we're, you know, I'm, I'm uh, I don't know how to say it. I'm, I'm I mean, I, I, I'm going to watch it. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm kind of I'm kind of iffy about it. I'm not sure how I feel. Uh, about the storyline it's it's kind of like i don't know if you remember but back in uh back in the end of the 90s early 2000s they did um uh teenage mutant ninja turtles and i think it might have been by uh image comics or flaming carrot comics i can't remember uh but anyway they did a uh, teenage mutant ninja turtles where the characters were returned to their base uh the turtles were more turtle like more snapping turtle like uh shredder was the shogun of uh, f uh, uh of a uh, Japanese shogun that was over uh, over New York. Uh, he was actually not the, completely the bad guy, but kind of the bad guy. Um, it was very dark, black and white, I very interesting. And so I think I think uh, comics have traveled down this road before. Uh, I just hope they're not rehashing the same crappy story over and over again. Um, we'll see. All right, we are about, we are almost to the end of our first hour. We are going to take a second uh, and uh, go on a quick break. I'll uh, leave you with some uh, Monster Cat. It looks like the sh song that's on now is Inject by Drop Tech. So uh, give us a second. We'll be back. Uh, thanks so much. All right. 
right, and we are back. Like I said, we are we are getting really close to the end of our first hour. So, uh, so we'll go back. You know, we we uh, you know, if you have any any uh, questions, anything you'd like to talk about, let, let us know. Hey, we're looking for we're looking for a co-host for our uh, Big Dead show. A couple of people we could hang out with. We try to do it. We're trying to do it, uh, get it so we can do it every Wednesday at about noon uh, Central Standard Time. So if you know anybody who's interested, who can you know who can commit to being two hours on a radio show, we'll uh, get you a link to our Discord. We'll get you in the stream and bounce ideas back and forth. And so it'll be a lot more fun. We had people to talk to other than just ourselves. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I have some friends who who would love to, but uh, they are not always available on Wednesdays. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, all right, going into hour number two on the Big Dad Show. Um, See what we got on our agenda today. First things first, coming into hour two, we always do the Big Dad shout out. Um, so this week, we're going to Big Dad shout out to our buddy Richard. Richard uh, lives in St. Louis. He's a really great guy, and he builds custom computers. Uh, he builds gaming rigs in his spare time. Uh, he also streams. Uh, you know, he when he can when he can get away with it, he, he's been not being able to stream as much. But I'm gonna give a shout out to Richard. Hey, Rich, what's up? Hold it down. And uh, we're gonna give a shout out to our buddy Boseth, uh Commando Bo on uh, on Twitch. I'm not sure if he's watching today, but uh, uh, he's always he's always fun. I'm shocked that he, if he is watching, I'm shocked he's not in the chat uh, making fun of me as we speak. Uh, but apparently he, he is off today, and uh, we wanted to give a big shout out to Bo, uh, our buddy Angie Mo. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us and having some fun whenever you can. All right, so going into hour two, we are going to talk about some things, uh, my favorite things in the whole world, things that make our world go around on this platform, and that is video games. So. Uh, there's some cool things coming up. Uh, we talked about Battlefront 2 earlier. Well, we talked about EA earlier uh, and mentioned Battlefront 2. But so um, Battlefront 2 has a major update coming, and in the major update, uh, there is going to be two really super important things. They have, they say, fixed the microtransactions. As we mentioned earlier, uh, microtransactions will uh, you you won't be able to buy coins anymore uh you'll only be able to buy crystals with cash and crystals will only buy you skins they won't buy uh they won't give you an advantage over anybody else um you can still get coins apparently through missions and battle and those kinds of things like always and those will be used for all the other things um but the second one and it it i guess it depends on how much of a purist you are uh, when it comes to Star Wars, but apparently uh, they are bringing Ewoks to Battlefront 2. Now, I have to admit I am split on Ewoks. I loved Ewoks in uh, Return of the Jedi. They were hilarious little furry monsters. Um, I even watched, I don't know if some of you will remember, some of you probably not old enough to remember, but uh, I, I did, used to watch the Ewoks uh, TV show. Uh, it was fun. Uh, you know, it had nothing to do, um, it had absolutely nothing to do with the rest of the Star Wars universe, uh, but it was set on the moon of Endor and there were Ewoks in it. It was fun. Uh, so playing as Ewoks is kind of weird. Um, I do, you do get to play as an Ewok on the Old Republic. There is um, a incredibly actually really powerful little Ewok, a uh, little female Ewok that you get to play as called Treek, and she's pretty cool. I, I, I don't always use her, um, but she's fun. Uh, she says a lot of really crazy things. So uh, that's the first thing. Ewoks are coming to Battlefront 2. Um, so w a trailer dropped this week um, that 
I was really super impressed with. It's going to be interesting. I'm not sure about the gameplay as far as how how the, it's going to function or operate. Um, I don't know if there is a uh, a demo going to be available that I can try. Uh, if there is, you can bet you that I am going to try it, and it will the review will end up being all over on YouTube or, or uh, I might even live stream it uh, here on Twitch. But it's called Vampire. Now, apparently, apparently, you get to play as a person, as a soldier, in uh, a doctor who becomes a member of the undead uh, at the same time in London that the uh, plague is going on. And uh, and it, it looks super inter interesting. It, 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 from the trailer, it, it looks like it functions like a, like a first-person shooter. But instead of shootering, you're you're you being a vampire. Um, that sounds super cool to me. Uh, there's secret societies and puzzles and mystery, and it looks incredible. <laughs> now, the funnest part of of the trailer was the fact that there was a remixed version of um, "Don't Fear the Re uh, Yeah, Don't Fear the Reaper," and it was amazing. It's just incredible. Uh, I actually had to go to YouTube and check out the uh, check out the, the the video for that without the vampire. It's haunting and terrifying and so very 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 cool. Uh, so check that out. Go to the uh, go to Google. Check out the vampire uh, trailer. Do 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 do. Uh, if you do check it out, if you think it's cool, uh, let us know on Twitter. Let us know what you think. Um, all right, going into we are officially into hour two. So what we're gonna do now is check our emails and our Twitter and see if we've got anything from anybody. Uh, let's see. I'm on the team page. Yeah, yeah. Check us out on Drupal, man. That is so freaking cool. So as a website for musicians that can uh, network with each other and all that. Um, Taylor Swift, nah, not, nothing on that. Let's check our Twitter. <gasps> Twitter has been acting crazy today, y'all. I don't know what the deal is with that. Let's see if we've got anybody tweeting at us today. Dude, I'm telling you right now, one of the things that you need to do, you need to check out Chuck D on Twitter. L love me some Chuck D. He is an amazing man. Uh, Chuck D from uh, from uh, Public Enemy. Um, now I'm a rock guy. I've always been. A rock. Well, I can't say I've always been a rock guy, but I've been a rock guy for a long time. But I love Public Enemy. Love Public Enemy. Uh, you know, a lot of people think that Kid Rock created rap rock, and that's not true. The first uh, one of the first rap rock songs I ever heard had Public Enemy and Anthrax in it. Amazing. It was off of uh, there. It was on two albums back in the '90s, uh, and uh, simply amazing stuff. Check that out. Uh, um, Bring the noise it was uh, it was actually a remix. It was on an older album, just pure Chuck D, just spitting some truth, and then it was on Apocalypse '91, The Enemy Strikes Black, and up on and on Anthrax's uh, album that dropped that same year. Uh, Anthrax, uh, Public Enemy, spitting some truth. Anyway, so we don't have anything new on Twitter or Facebook, so we are going to. Take a look at the headlines and see if there's anything we want to talk about. If there's anything you want to talk about, anything uh, at all, please let us know. Tweet at us. Talk about it in the chat. We will We will see what's cooking. Let's see what's cooking. What? Oh, you're a liar. 
Okay, so we're not going to talk about politics. We don't talk about politics on this channel. Only if it's important to gaming. Uh, oh, man, we want to talk about this. This is amazing. So, I don't know if you guys heard about it, but there was a, an airplane, a Southwest Airlines from uh, New York to Dallas, that went down yesterday. Apparently, a bird flew into the uh, jet engine Caused it to explode. Pieces hit the window. Sucked a lady halfway out the window. And the airline pilot uh, got, gets it to the ground. Crashes. Uh, you know, gets the the, the uh, plane on the ground. There's, you know, only one person has died out of this. Um, and there's a video. You can look it up on the on the internet. On YouTube. I think you can get it on YouTube. Uh, the 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 pilot. She's a former Navy uh, Navy pilot, and she's just got nerves of steel. She she's you know she's talking to the uh, to the um, to the tower and tells them that uh, there's been an explosion and part of the left uh, engine is is gone. Um, he's like, well, you know, bring it around, stay at three thousand feet, approach gently, and she, and she's just. Oh, she's just amazing. So, uh, that's what we need more. Uh, you, you know, more people like that. She didn't panic. She just brought the plane in. You know, brought the brought the plane in and saved lots and lots of lives. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. All right, whatever. What uh, what else? What else here? Of course, we don't, we're not talking about politics. <laughs> All right, so let's see. We're not talking about politics. We're not talking about that. All right, esports. So that's what we needed to talk about. We are dead in the center of uh, the Overwatch tournament, I think. And we have some things to talk about. This is a nerd and geek culture web. Uh, Newscast, so we're going to talk about some esports. Esports now. Uh, let's see. Let me pull that website up so we can check it out. Ah, Overwatch. Wow. All right. So the Overwatch League a few weeks ago. Uh, I don't know if, if you guys will remember, but they had a leak of some of their um, their code of conduct. Um, and it, it kind of it kind of struck some of us uh, a little a little badly. I've got a, a friend of mine uh, who plays Overwatch, and uh, one of the things that was in the code of conduct is that the Overwatch League owns uh, any of the league players' uh, streams, and it, they, there's things that you can't do as an Overwatch League um, team member. Um, you know, you don't own your own stream. They can, you can't uh, be affiliated with any other non-Blizzard game. You can't, um, you know, you can't accept uh, sponsorships for tobacco or, or alcohol or any of those kind of things. Um, there's a whole bunch of rules, uh, and uh, basically, they can tell you what to stream. They own your stream. They own your content, and uh, you know, and so. Um, Yesterday uh, on esports, uh, it's the sport, the score esports.com. Uh, they had an article that uh, I thought was important, so we are, we're talking about it right now. Um, so, a, a former, uh, well, not another, the former NHL uh, attorney for the National Hockey League has weighed in on these Darth Pelagius the Wise. Did no, what is that? Uh, anyway, so uh, he weighed in on the uh, on the the code of conduct that she weighed in on the code of conduct, and um, they, they said basically it's more like what the NCAA uh, behaves instead of like uh, uh, instead of like what the you know what a professional uh, 
<laughs> no, we're we we uh we do everything. A little bit of uh Star Wars, a little bit of uh basically like a gun uh like a a nerd nerd culture kind of thing. Sometimes we do uh Star Wars. Give us a second and we will look up Darth Plagueis the wise. I'm familiar with Darth Plagueis, but uh Darth Sidious. Oh, that's what I thought. Um, it, you know, it's funny that you mentioned Darth uh, Darth Sidious, uh, Darth Plagueis the Wise. Um, um, I read uh, that we were there was a guy who has a, a blog. Uh, about Star Wars, and he was talking about the other day about um, ten things that don't make sense in the Star Wars universe, and one of them was that um, Anakin doesn't have a father, uh, you know. And he was talking about that from the standpoint of uh, the, you know, that it was never explained. Ha! <laughs> That's funny. I think you're being funny. Anyway, so. Uh, Apparently, uh, Darth uh, Darth Plagueis uh, may have actually caused um, Anakin to be born, which is kind of funny. And uh, yeah, in the story, in the in the story, uh, the uh, the. Uh, a apprentice that kills Darth Plagueis in his sleep is actually Darth Sidious. Ha! <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's, the he could create life from the Force, like I said, in, uh, in, in several different, um, they're not, um, they're not part of the, uh, the universe anymore, but, uh, they were part of the extended universe. I think they were in a couple of comic books that he, he may have actually accidentally, uh, caused Anakin to to actually be born, which is really weird. <clears throat> but we're glad you're here. What's up, Grand Ninja Killer? Grand Ninja Killer. Yeah, not canon. Yeah, it should be canon though. Uh, if they took the time to put it in the uh, those uh, if they took the time to put it in the in the prequels, it should stay. It should have stayed canon. That's that's interesting part of it. Um, they killed the uh, killed the extended universe, but it, sometimes the extended universe was uh, it, they took great great care to explain things that weren't in there. <laughs> talk about Star Wars. We can talk about Star Wars. Talk about. Um, have you? Uh, I'm sure you've seen the uh, the um, the Last Jedi already. We just uh, we just saw it this weekend. Um, we talked about it a little bit uh, over on our YouTube channel. Yeah, we we really liked it. Uh, my kids really really liked it. Um, you know, we, we thought that uh, I personally thought that uh, you you know putting aside the whole Luke you know Luke the legend Luke Skywalker thing, I really thought that. Uh, it it was it was cool. I thought it was cool the way that, uh, um, you know, they brought made make, made Luke Skywalker something more than just a robot. You know, Superman. My one of my favorite lines in the new movie was, uh, "What did you think was going to happen? You know, I was going to face down the entire uh, entire First Order with a laser sword. That was that was cool." But um bum bum. Anyway, uh, bum, bum, I'm kind of going through here. Bum, bum, bum. 
Midi chlorians. That's funny. I lo love the midi chlorians. So I know, I'm also looking forward to the the solo movie. I think, uh, you know, uh, we'll see how it works out. Um, you know how it works out uh, to to be cool. I um, you know, I heard a rumor. I read a rumor yesterday online that um, they're gonna push the Han Solo story to three, uh, to three to a trilogy. You know, and instead of just being the one off. So I think that'll be interesting. Um, it looks fun. I, um, it looks super fun to uh, to watch. Uh, the interaction between Han and Chewie is hilarious. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Do do so. Uh, do do do. Checking it out here. Looking at our social media. See what we've got cooking. Nothing on social media. Let's see what we got here. Go over to Facebook. See if anybody's hit us up on Facebook for anything. Nope. None of our homies are online. All right. So what were we talking about? Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Let's find our thing we were talking about. What were you talking about when, when you came in? Um, I don't remember. Bump, 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 bump. What were we talking about? I don't remember what we were talking about when you came, when Greninja popped in. Let's check out. <laughs> Formerly known as food. That's hilarious. Um. Oh, we were talking about. Uh, the we were talking about e-scores, uh, e-sports. E so much fun. Uh, thanks for popping in, Greninja. We appreciate it. Uh, we're gonna get back to our regular show now. Okay, so, um, I don't know if you watched much. Uh, if anybody's watched any, um, any of the, the uh, Overwatch League championships, I haven't really watched it. Um, Overwatch is a great game. I mean, it really is. I, I love it a lot. Um, and, uh, like I said, a buddy of mine plays Overwatch. He's really, he really loves that game. And, um, I played it. I played it when it was the free weekend. Uh, for me, it, it's a little expensive to try to purchase it and play it all the time. I think if I had a PlayStation 4, um, I might play it more, but I don't. So, Playing it on PC, the the PC that I use to stream, the PC that I use for, uh, you you know, for gaming, is not really strong enough. I don't think, uh, to uh to play a game like that constantly. So I just haven't tried it. Uh, you know, I just tried it on the the free weekend and then I let it go. Um, you know, one thing I want I'm gonna stop and uh, say if you if you if you think we should do more Star Wars stuff, um, you know, let me know. Tweet at me, Gummy G at uh, nineteen seventy six at you know on Twitter. Let me know. Should we should do, you know, should we make this a uh, a Star Wars uh, show? Should we make it? Uh, you know, is it was it cool what we're doing? Um, it it kind of throws me off when we get some people who, you know, kind of it just kind of threw me off a little bit. It was cool though. It was cool. Thanks for coming in, Greninja Killer. Um, so anyway, so let's check out some of these scores in the Overwatch tournament. Um, today, let's see, let's go to Saturday. Uh, the Philadelphia Fusion beat London Spitfire 3-2. Florida Mayhem fell to Boston Uprising 3-2. And uh, New York Excelsior beat the Houston Outlaws. Today's part of the thing, we have the Los Angeles Gladiators versus Los Angeles Valiant, Shanghai Dragons versus Seoul Dynasty, and Dallas Fuel uh, over uh, with us and the San Francisco Shock. You know, hey, you know, one of the things uh, about 
uh, esports that I find so fascinating is that there are uh, so many great players out there who are not part of any kind of league. And um, we need more cities willing to take a, you know, take a chance and and build some teams. Uh, my city, St. Louis, I'd love to see, uh, you know, esports team here. Uh, I, I read an article yesterday, and, I, and that's one of the things I meant to talk about this hour is that uh, some of the NBA teams are actually considering sponsoring uh, esports tur- teams and tournaments. I think that'd be interesting. It'd be cool to see what happens when. You know, it'd be it'd be interesting to see what happens if they, uh, if if uh, some of the big wigs would start investing in esports. I mean, esports is the way of the future. Uh, in Las Vegas this year, they they finally built a major esports arena there in Vegas. Um, so you know, I would love to see more, uh, you, you know, more esports. But at the same time, you know, it there it does present a problem to see to be. Um, it uh, does present a problem in the long run if you get more rich people involved in this. Uh, I mean, basketball, uh, football, baseball, uh, wrestling, all of those things, um, you know, get complicated. The more money gets piled in it, the, the more uh, complicated it gets. All right, so we are about 20 minutes into the second hour. Uh, I am going to uh, take a quick break, clear my head, and uh, grab a drink of coffee, and we'll come back with... Uh, We'll get some stuff. We'll get something cooking in the next uh, half hour. Hang on a second. We'll be right back. All right, we are back. We've got about 30 minutes left in our show. We are going to talk about some stuff now. Uh, we got some things talk- to talk about uh, going on with the brand. And um, first off, I want to apologize to Greninja Killer. Uh, sorry, I was not prepared uh, for that. We, we, we do talk about Star Wars some, um, you know, but... Uh, it, it kind of threw me off, and I apologize for the silence and the awkwardness. Um, you know, thanks for coming in. We do appreciate anybody who who, who pops in to the stream. 
Um, so here, here's the deal. Here's what we got going on in the future. Um, we're going to be on tonight, uh, later on this evening, uh, playing, uh, it's not a new game for everybody. It's a new game for me. I've been playing it for just a little bit. I got invited last stream to, um, try out Star Wars Galaxies. I really like it. So I, I was wanting to have a stream, uh, where, where we kind of show you some of the cool stuff going on in Star Wars Galaxies. Uh, we're going to have a new video that drops. Uh, I'm actually going to do a quick review on YouTube. Uh, we're going to have a video that drops with that over there on Friday. We are, uh, unfortunately, we've been trying to stream about five days a week. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we've been trying to stream about five days a week. Uh, trying to get it, you know, build this, build this, uh, build this stream up, build build up what we do. Um, but we, I just started a new job. So we are going to have to fix our schedule because it's, it's, it's all wonky and it's around the place, you know, all over the place. So we're going to have to figure that out and, uh, get it all fixed up. Um, um, you know, so we can get, get a good, uh, a good solid idea of what we're doing around here. I'm, I'm hoping to find, uh, when I, when I said earlier that I wanted a, a co-host, I'm being dead serious. Uh, I need... Uh, someone who can uh, be in a, be in the stream Wednesdays at noon, uh, be in for about two hours, uh, so we can talk and have some fun and make fun of each other. And you know, I really want this to be something greater. Um, you know, because we we're running out of content and I needed to stretch it out. Uh, I thought I had enough for two hours, but we're, looks like about an hour and a half. And like I said, it kind of threw me off uh, when Greninja Killer came in. And again, I do apologize. Um, we'd love to be able to interview, uh, small streamers, content creators, uh, get their views about, about streaming, about their, you know, give them, give them a chance to highlight their content, give them a chance to talk about what they're doing. Um, you know, uh, any kind of creator, not just, not just gaming or, uh, you know, any kind of thing. If you're a musician, if you're a, if you're an artist, if you're a writer, uh, we'll get you in here, uh, you know, get you get you on our Discord uh, and uh, talk about, uh, you know, talk about you and your stuff and what you what you're doing, uh, what you you know. So that would be freaking great. Um, you know, if you if you want to, if you, if you think that we should talk about Star Wars stuff uh, and concentrate on that, um, we can we can do. This 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 uh this is kind of a new thing. We're just trying to figure out, find ourselves, figure out what we're doing. Um, you know, any 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 and all, um, any and all, um, you know, will any any suggestions? We'll we'll gladly take them and figure you know figure out what's what's cooking, uh, with them. Um. So you know, that's, those those are the things that are kind of going on behind the scenes, a little bit around here. We're just trying to figure this thing out and get to a, a point where we we know what we're doing a little bit better. Um. That being said, um, you know, we we like I said, we do we, you know we do need some help around here. We do need. Uh, what you what do you think? What do you think we should do? Should you, should we concentrate more on the the you know the, the Star Wars aspect of it? Uh, you know, do you like the nerd culture, nerd slash geek culture news that we do? Um, yeah, the gaming stuff. You know, if you have games that you want us to try out, if you have uh, news that you think we should feature, uh, if you want to be featured on the shout out, um, you know, let us know. Um, you know, pretty much I anything is good. Um, so what we're going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. Hey, we got somebody else new in the room. What is up? How are you doing? Uh, we This is the Big Dad Show. We are uh, talking about uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, what was I saying? I lost my train of thought somewhere. So anyway, so you know, if there's things you want to talk about, if uh, if there's news stories or tech stories, mo uh, you know, movies that you think we ought to check out, trailers, those kind of things, just hit us up on Twitter, uh, hit us up on uh, Facebook, and we will check those out and we'll talk about them. Uh, like I said, about 
uh, we we try to do this about once a week. Um, uh, do 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 do. So let's go back to our uh, let's go back to our news feed and see what we've got cooking to talk about. There was something I wanted to talk about, but I but I'm I, honestly I'm at a loss to remember what exactly it was. Okay, I want to go back to a story that we covered in the first hour and really kind of break it down and, and talk about what the importance of it is. And that was we were talking about Billy Mitchell. Um, and a friend of mine wanted to know what's the big deal about Billy Mitchell? Why uh, are people making such a huge deal out of the Billy Mitchell uh, thing? And... Um, you know, you can let me know uh, if you if you don't know what's going on. Basically, Billy Mitchell is a supervillain in the gaming world, and uh, he set a few uh, questionable uh, high scores on Donkey Kong. Uh, he had what what somebody were call, some were calling the first perfect playthrough of Pac Man. Uh, I'm not sure how that one works because Pac Man, uh, to my knowledge, and I've been playing arcade games for my whole life. Um, I didn't think that Pac-Man ever ever ended. I didn't I mean, I've heard about the kill screen, but I didn't know that you could actually get there. I always thought that was an urban legend. Um but anyway, so he apparently you know, he 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 claims to be one of those people that actually made it to the uh to the kill screen, perfect game, whatever. Um but anyway, so he had his scores removed this week by Twin Galaxies. Now, if you don't know what Twin, Twin Galaxies is, it, it Twin Galaxies was an arcade way back in the day, the oldest arcade apparently, uh, and they over the years went from being an arcade to a museum um, and, and and a scorekeeper. They keep uh, these, you know, like the best, the highest scores on arcade games and, and video games, and and so over the years, um, you know, all the way through the '90s uh, on up, they started keeping these these scores. Uh, so somewhere in the 2000s, Billy Mitchell uh, was part of a um, documentary called The King of Kong. And he set, he said he set a million, million point record. You know, it's been smashed a couple of times, you know. Uh, um, and, and so there was this documentary about uh, this other dude who was trying to beat that million point score. And Billy Mitchell would always show up swooping like Darth Vader. Uh, and 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 stop it. Well, this week they uh, it's, well started earlier in the year uh, with another um, another um, person, another historic gamer lost his uh, high score, uh, his re record high score um, with Twin Galaxies and ended up being banned for life. Um, and um, and so then apparently there's a guy at Twin Galaxies that's his job he makes sure that the records are are right uh and Billy Mitchell had records both with Twin Galaxies and also with the Guinness Book of World Records um and, and so they did some experiments um <laughs> they did some experiments and they they came to see that um he had they came to believe that Billy Mitchell had used an emulator uh, now, like I pointed out in the first hour, it, using the emulator is not the important part. You can use an emulator to set high scores, uh, but you can't say you you used that you set the high score on a cabinet and then having used the emulator because the emulators can be customized because the way that the the way that the 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 cabinets used to work, uh, the old arcade cabinets used to work, is that um, it's much like a cart uh, for the old Nintendos. You plug the games in the top, and the all the games are were kept on the EEPROM in the cabinet. Now emulation uh, is different; it's pure software, so you can customize the software to do whatever you want it to and it, it does give gamers it does give gamers uh, the opportunity to uh you know for instance save their game and um you know pick it back up from a spot go back to it and um let me check my uh, while we're talking we'll check my uh huh. um 
So Billy Mitchell, the the fact that he he, he the, the the pure fact is that he said he set it on that he set these records on a um on a cabinet and there were apparently transitions and I've seen the video um and, and side by side comparison between Billy Mitchell's video saying that he want you know saying that he set the he set the the score to the video of an actual uh, of an actual transition between between um play and and there's there's a there's a uh, there is a difference there um and, and so because of the differences and because of they had experts uh, I can't believe that I mean we're in 2018 we have experts on video game transitions how do I get that job uh, anyway so um so anyway, experts decided that he had indeed, instead of using a cabinet, uh, you know, a, a cabinet arcade, that he used an emulator, and and because that he, because that in the category that he was in, Donkey Kong, um, if you're gonna set a record and say it, and, and it be an emulate, emulated, they have to make it be an emulated, you know, it, it's like an asterisk, you know, emulated. Um, and so because that he said it was a cabinet and then he used emulation, they uh, negated his scores and banned him from Twin Galaxies for life. That also, unfortunately, uh, negated his uh, Guinness Book of World Records um, and the Guinness Book kicked him out. Uh, now, he swears up and down that he did not cheat. Um you know, and that he has video evidence that he didn't cheat. The thing I am going to say is this. Um, my, my, for those of you who don't know my history, uh, it's, it's in my about me a little bit, but my parent, my grand uncle and my dad owned a video game company uh, when I was a, a kid. Um, and the thing is, is that for, for, for cabinet arcade games to work here in the United States, um, they have to have certain uh, rules. There's certain rules and things that other countries don't um, don't make us adhere. To, don't make the manufacturers adhere to. So in Japan, uh, the cabinet uh, arcade game is is significantly different than the cabinet arcade game here in the United States. And also uh, on Donkey Kong, I, I would have to look. I, I um, I'm just saying this. And I'm probably talking out my rear end right now but on I think on Donkey Kong there was an update uh, somewhere along the line so there may be and, and and I'm sure they thought of these things and and you, you know in their re, in their research I mean they didn't quickly jump to taking away his his score but you know that re, that um, so there may have been a difference between the Japanese version and he could have I mean because he 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 is a restaurateur and kind of wealthy so he could have used you know hot sauce I think his thing his main line was hot sauce or something but he could have used a different cabinet to and the transitions would have been significantly different now I'm not saying that that's the case I'm just saying um, you know that could have been the that could have been the case that um, you know he could have used um he he could have used a, a, a diff you know there could have been a different update or whatever than so and like I said I, I I don't believe that Twin Galaxies um you know they they're the oldest arcade on on in the United States you know the rules are there for reason and I'm not disagreeing with them as far as that goes the point I'm trying to make is and we're doing a lot of rambling to get around to my point is my friend asked uh, what's the importance of that why do we care that twin galaxies negated um his uh, his uh scores for cheating well if you've ever seen the movie pixels um the fire blaster <laughs> played by peter dinklage in pixels oh hang on guys we're gonna we're gonna cut away to to some
Sorry about that. We're back. Um, what was I saying? Uh, why do we care? So the reason why we care is, um, you know, in the movie, in the movie Pixels, Peter Dinklage's character, the Fire Blaster, he um, he cheated uh, playing uh, Pac Man um, or Don Donkey Kong, and it's funny that they caught that they put that in there. I said earlier that it was definitely uh, Easter egg aimed at Billy Mitchell uh, because you know the way the way Peter Dinklage's hair is and everything about it, sunglasses, everything about him uh, screams Billy Mitchell. Uh, anyway, but the reason why the reason why we care about the cheating, uh, why I care about the cheating, is. There's definitely a difference in competi competitiveness uh, amongst gamers uh, than there is the competitiveness amongst other sports. Um, we are – how do I put it? I, I, you know, I know what I'm trying to say, but it's, it's hard to put. So, so we are super competitive. We are super – uh, every gamer I know of, every gamer I've ever met, every gamer that loves this medium, loves this, uh, you know, loves video games, loves streaming, loves anything. Um, it's important to understand the history of 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 video games and how that, for the longest time, um, now when I was when I was uh, ten years old. Um, I, I told my mom, my, we were talking about careers now, um, she said, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I said, I want to play video games. Uh, and at that point, in, in 1986, playing video games as a career was about as funny and about as laughable as somebody who said, I want to drive an ice cream truck. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's... The comparison that my father used. Uh, I want to drive an ice cream truck. Uh, or I want to skateboard for a living. I, I said that as well. I wanted to skateboard for a living. Which was funny because I have no balance. But anyway. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on.
And we're back. And what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, P, uh, uh, Billy Mitchell. So why we care. So the importance of this whole thing is that um, we, we as video gamers, especially professional gamers, people who care about making this more uh, mainstream, um, and, and, you know, so for the longest time, we, we, you could play video games, but then you had a career and then, the, then suddenly there were careers that were video games. Uh, but they, most of those were like beta testers or, uh, you know, and, but, but now there's actually careers that have to do with playing video games. I mean, streaming is a career. There's, you know, professional, uh, video game players, there's, you know, leagues, there's, of course, there's still beta testing and, and those things. So you have this, for lack of a better term, and I don't usually cuss in the stream, but you have this jackass who achieved this notoriety early on. I mean, Billy Mitchell is a legend, um, and he achieved this no notoriety by basically being the Darth Vader of gaming. Um, and then to discover later that he lied and cheated about it, it's important. It's super important. Um, because we want to... At least I want video gaming to be different than playing football. Like, when you play football... When you play football, there are rules, there are things, there are, you know, th those things that are super important about the way that we do things. Um, and in the last few years, we've there's been so many uh, mainstream football players who have been accused of cheating, um, and yet they still win. And and for us as gamers to try to be different and overcome some of those things. Um, we we have to. I I feel like um, hold ourselves up now. In this instance, like I've said, if he had said, you know, I used an emulated cab. I used an emulator um, to achieve my to to achieve my score. They would have just verified it as a cab as an emulation, and he would have he would have had the highest score. As far as emulation goes, um, and and the, and and he would not have been kicked out, and but it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been a big deal, and that's the problem. The problem is is that it wouldn't have been as big a thing if he had said, "Oh, I used emulation." Uh, there's you know um, because those scores are are more uh, more available thanks to emulation. So that's why you know. So that's that for me is why we. You know why it's a big deal, and why Twin Galaxies is making such a big deal about it. Because as this as this um, medium grows, uh, we want to make sure that w w you know that the scores are right, and that the the things we do are right, and that it's 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 better than um, you know. It, it's hard for me to explain. It's, it's just when you're passionate about something. It's important to not cheat. I feel like if you want to use, like I said in the first hour, if you want to use cheat codes to get past a really hard section that you can't win, like a Batman, Ar a great example, Batman Arkham City. There's a section with Mr. Freeze I could never get. Uh, I actually had to use cheat codes on the PC version so that I could get past uh, Mr. Freeze because it's just insanely freaking hard. And I don't have a problem with that. Um, but when you're in a when you're in a competition, when you're in a competition and you're 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 um, you're saying one thing and, and doing another, to me, it, it's like when you play like I play, um, oh what is it, Combat Arms? Uh, it's a first per first person shooter, and even though they have software to block you from being able to use them, there are you know one shot kill bots and those kind of things and some of those people um just drive me crazy because they act like they're not using bots but they are uh you know there's no way that anybody is that good 
and um, there's a game that I play, uh, Black Squad. It's also a first-person shooter, and there are some people on there who swear to swear to God that they're not using um, bots, but I know for a fact that they are because they're shooting around the corner. Hey, what's up? Not a lot. What is cooking? We are talking about Billy Mitchell right now. What's cooking? Uh, thanks for being in the show, on the sh being in the chat. Oh man, we're getting having a couple people in the chat. What's up? <laughs> so yeah, we're talking about Billy Mitchell and uh, the controversy surrounding uh, his scores being uh, vacated with uh, Twin Galaxies right now. Um, the importance of not cheating uh, when you make when you make high scores and and, and you get that. <laughs> funny. That's some funny stuff. Anyway, so the other thing we were going to talk about today, we did talk about it a little bit in the first hour. We're going to go back to it right now. Um, is uh, the Battlefront thing? Um, we talked about in the first that uh, the CEO of e, uh, EA says that they've learned their lesson and they're going to fix the Battlefront. I, I don't know if I, I believe that. Like I said, I haven't played Battlefront two yet. A lot of my friends think say it's really great and I like it, and they like it. But I haven't couldn't justify paying the, you know, paying the the uh, paying for it yet. We're gonna we'll see what happens. But with the microtransactions, uh, they they say they fixed it. We'll see. Um, it is cool though that they're gonna add the Ewoks. I love the love the little fuzzy guys. That's pretty sweet. All right, so we got about eight more minutes left, and then we're gonna we're gonna get out of here for the day. Um, let's see here, what do we want to talk about in the last eight minutes? I wonder if there's a way for me to see who's in my chat. Viewer list. Monster Cat Nightbot. Electrical skateboard, huh? That's pretty sweet. Well, thanks for being in the chat today. Thanks for being in the in the you know in my stream, checking us out, watching us. Uh, we're having some fun. Uh, we got just got about six or seven more minutes until we get out of here, um, and uh, we'll be back this evening. We're gonna come back and play some uh, Star Wars Galaxies, probably, um, maybe something else. If you have any suggestions for any kind of indie games or Star Wars games, uh, tweet at me, uh, Gunny G nineteen seventy six on Twitter, uh, also on Facebook. Um, let us know if there's any games that you think that we should check out. Yeah, like I said, so we're, we appreciated everybody being in today. Thanks so much uh, um, for chatting with us. Uh, thanks for so much for watching us uh, talk about uh, the things that are super important to us. We're going to do this again next week about noon. Hopefully next week we will have a co-host um, trying to get a buddy of mine to free up his schedule so he can be in the chat, uh, you know, talk so we can have somebody else to chat with, talk to, and make fun of each other. It's uh, he, He's like one of my bestest friends in the whole wide world, and uh, he's hilarious. So anyway, so thanks so much for watching. Um, in about 24 hours, this video will be on YouTube. The link is down in the down in my description. Check out my other videos over there. Uh, we have some other things. Like I put up a review of uh, The Last Jedi. We finally saw that over the weekend, and my review is over on YouTube. Um, we also have some reviews of some indie games that we've played, a couple of really great uh, um, Star Wars flight simulators. Um, and a couple of other things. Uh, um, I just got the 2005 Battlefront 2. We are going to do a review of that this week. We're also going to do a review. Probably drop two videos on Friday reviewing um, 
those two videos. Uh, I mean, Star Wars Galaxies and do Battlefront 2. Um, like I said, if you have any suggestions for any indie games or Star Wars games, uh, please tweet at us. Uh, those links are down. All our social media links are down in the description. We appreciate you so much. Uh, we did have this week the pleasure of having a uh, research assistant, my lovely wife, Danielle uh, uh, is our research assistant, and I would go so far as to call her our uh, executive producer. Uh, we do so much appreciate everybody being in the stream. We do appreciate uh, you know, everybody. Hopefully, we're going to smash that uh, affiliate status soon, and then we can start uh, start to try to improve. Uh, we are going to have a, hopefully have a new camera soon, uh, so this fuzzy, you know, over here, the fuzzy light stuff is going to be different so if you have any suggestions you have any uh you know please tweet at us please uh if you're watching this video on youtube please smash that subscription button hit that like button help us out help us move into doing this full time and we appreciate you we love you every week i say every week i say it every video i say it um we love you we appreciate you be safe out there the world is not a nice place let's be a little more jedi like let's be a little more uh tolerant to each other and um maybe help this world be a little bit better so I, I love you i appreciate you and as always and i do mean it may the force be with you